This is one of LG's new 2018 4K HDR monitors. For $700, or around £550 to £600, the LG 27 UK850 isn't cheap, but considering good quality 4K HDR monitors are still quite rare, and it offers features like USB-C, AMD FreeSync, and 100% sRGB color accuracy, I think it's actually pretty good value for money. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've been using this as my main monitor for the past week or so, using it to play games, edit videos, watch YouTube, you know, usual stuff. And so far, I'm actually really impressed with it. But if you've seen any of my previous monitor buying guide videos, you'll know that when it comes to 4K monitors, personally, I think 27 inches is just a bit too small to really fully appreciate 4K. I think 32 inches is the sweet spot. But obviously that adds cost, and if you do want the absolute sharpest, highest pixel per inch count possible on a monitor, then, well, this is it. But 4K monitors aren't new, there's loads to choose from. But what makes this stand out is support for high dynamic range, which I'll talk about in a minute, and a really handy USB-C port that can carry the full 4K60 resolution, charge your laptop, and transfer data all at the same time. And it's this USB-C port, as well as a pair of 5 watt speakers and more color calibration options, that makes this UK850 the highest spec model in LG's lineup of three otherwise nearly identical monitors. So if you're not bothered about those things, then you may as well save some money and go for one of the cheaper models. In terms of design, I think it's a really good, smart looking monitor. It would fit in well at home or at the office. And it's also got a really nice thin bezel around, well, three of the four edges. It's got a bit of a fatter chin at the bottom here. It's also quite flexible. You can adjust the height uh, from down there up to there. You can also uh, tilt it like so. You can't swivel it, it won't go that way, so the whole thing will actually turn. Uh, but you can uh, rotate it 90 degrees if you want. So you can use it in portrait orientation. So maybe if you're a programmer or a coder, that could come in handy. So that's pretty nice. And also it is visa mountable. It's got a white plastic back and a metal stand. Overall, build quality is very good. There aren't actually any buttons on the monitor at all. Everything is controlled by a single joystick, which is on the bottom here underneath the LG logo, where you can change the input as well as all the picture settings. There's a whole range of different picture modes you can go from. There's also a quick shortcut to game specific settings, which puts it in an FPS color mode and also gives you options to adjust the black stabilizer, which essentially opts the shadows and the blacks slightly, I think, which LG then say will help you uh, more easily see the bad guys in FPS games. It's not something I would personally use, uh, as well as free sync and response time. By default, it's on the fastest setting to get you the lowest response time, therefore the least ghosting. Personally, to avoid artifacting, I would leave it either on normal or fast. There's a solid range of ports as well around the back. We've got two HDMI 2.0 ports and a DisplayPort 1.2, along with a USB 3.1 Type-C, two USB-A downstreams, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. But let's get back to the good stuff, that screen, which is beautiful to look at. It's matte, so there's no annoying reflections. IPS glow and light bleed are minimal. And obviously at 4K, everything looks super sharp. The display itself, as I say, is factory calibrated. And my tests showed it covered 100% of the sRGB and 81% of the Adobe RGB color gamuts. So I'd happily edit and color correct photos and 4K videos on this monitor. It's also for gamers as well. Whether you're playing on console with an Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, or hooking it up to a desktop PC, you can take advantage of the 4K resolution, and if the game supports it, high dynamic range. And if you've got an AMD graphics card like a Vega 56 or 64, you can use the built-in FreeSync to reduce screen tearing. So that is all well and good, but if you're a gamer and you're watching this now, I bet you're thinking something along the lines of, well, number one, I wish it had a higher than 60 hertz refresh rate. Number two, that the 4K resolution will destroy your frame rate in games unless you have a super powerful graphics card like a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti. And in that situation, G-Sync, Nvidia's G-Sync would be much more useful than AMD's FreeSync. And finally, that yes, while this does support HDR, is it actually a true 10-bit HDR panel? And also, just how many games actually support high dynamic range? And if you were thinking any of those, then, well, you're right. All of these things are issues. I would love a 4K 120Hz monitor, but we're only just seeing these come out now. And along with G-Sync, that would probably double the price of this. And good luck getting 120 FPS at 4K with high settings anyway. 
It is also true that like most HDR monitors at the moment, this uses an 8-bit panel with FRC to artificially boost and simulate the extra colors a true 10-bit panel would offer. But unless you're dealing with professional grade Adobe RGB color editing, I'm not sure you'd really be able to tell the difference. So in my opinion, don't let that put you off buying it. And speaking of buying it, one of the main reasons you may consider actually buying this particular monitor is for its HDR support. But the truth is, or at least in my opinion, I just don't think high dynamic range on PC is worth investing in, or at least not yet. From a technical standpoint, you need brightness for HDR, and a lot of it. Most high-end HDR TVs are around 1000 nits, this monitor peaks at 450. It is still bright, but it won't be as vibrant or offer the same quality of HDR as the TV might. Windows 10 is also still kind of buggy with HDR support. Turning on HDR advanced color in the display settings just makes everything look washed out and gray. So don't turn that on, just wait for the specific programs or games to automatically switch it to HDR mode. Now you can actually watch Netflix in HDR on this monitor, as long as it's through the Microsoft Edge web browser. So that's pretty cool, but most people want this for gaming. And Battlefield 1 is a great example of where it works well. Load up the game and the monitor flickers into HDR mode, and then you have a variety of HDR related options in the settings menu. Switching between off, HDR10 and Dolby Vision high dynamic range really shows off the difference and what HDR can do, offering brighter whites, deeper blacks, more vibrant colors, and overall a more vivid and immersive look to the game. Combine that with the 4K resolution, and gaming on this monitor looks stunning. But the problem is, there's just so few PC games that support HDR, and even then not all of them implement it as well as this, I just don't think it's worth it right now. For everything else, you can use the HDR effect picture mode, which the monitor comes with, which tries to upscale SDR content to HDR, but really it just ups the brightness and contrast a little bit, and over sharpens everything, so I'd avoid it. So while I'm still not convinced by HDR on PC just yet, I would still highly recommend this monitor if you want a 4K resolution. And yes, even though it's not high refresh, G-Sync, or even true 10-bit, for the $700 price tag, I think this is a great buy, and USB-C is a nice addition. If you want to find out more, I've put links to this monitor in the description below if you want to go and check those out. Let me know what you think as well. Would you consider buying an HDR monitor, or is it not something you'd bother with? Maybe just hook up your PC to a TV? Is that a better option? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like me to make more monitor videos, click that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.